we thank you for this hour, for this moment in time that you spared us, that we be able to assemble in this your house of prayer for all the people. And you have promised, Lord, that your word will accomplish and your word shall prosper. And so it's already done. Help us then to receive that which you have already ordained for us to have, Lord. Fill us with your word. Feed us with your word this day, Lord. For that is what we need for our spiritual nourishment. Thank you for your complete and finished work at the cross that secured our salvation. And then thank you, Lord, for keeping us once we became saved. You have kept us, Lord. And for that, we tell you thank you. We want to confess and repent of our sin, knowing that we have from time to time, Lord, done those things we should not have done and neglected to do the things you told us to do. For that, we say we're sorry, Lord, and we repent and ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for loving us in spite of all. This is our prayer. In your Son, our Savior, Christ Jesus' name, we pray in the church that amen. amen. Our preaching name for the year is from God's perspective, taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, uh, verse number 8, where the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. And so it is our endeavor to look at life from God's perspective, not from man's perspective, because man has only partial perspective, but God has perfect perspective. Today we want to look at the book of Joshua, chapter number 9. I'll read verse number 14. It reads as follows, And the men took of their victuals, and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. I want to preach to you the word of God from this thought today, church. Lead not unto your own understanding. Yeah. Lead not unto your own understanding. The book of Joshua then begins with the children of Israel going over to begin their conquest of the land that God has promised. Promised Abraham and then through Isaac, through Jacob, the twelve sons of Jacob. They get there, and after Moses passed uh, on to be with the Lord, Joshua leads them into the promised land. They cross miraculously the Jordan River, similar to as God rolled back the Red Sea, God rolled back the Jordan River to allow them to be able to cross over into Canaan land. They get there, and Jericho awaits them, but when they are obedient to what God has said, they march around the walls of Jericho for six days, one lap for every day for six days, and then on that seventh day, they march seven times, and they shout and praise the Lord, and then the Lord does what he does, brings about the victory. Amen, church. Uh, they then move from Jericho to Ai, and after a little hiccup of a problem that Achan brought upon them, they are successful in conquering Ai. So now they're on the move. They are moving in a progressive and a positive way to do what God has called them to do. Chapter number 9 then opens, and it says this, And it came to pass when all the kings which were on this side of Jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, the Jebusite, heard thereof that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. So all of those tribes that were occupying Canaan land, they hear that Joshua and Israel not only are they on the way, but that God is making a way for them. They get together and decide to come together to fight against Israel. But chapter 9, verse 3 says, When the inhabitants of Gideon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai, they did work wildly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their donkeys and wine bottles, old and rent, and 
bound up and old shoes and clouded upon their feet, old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and molded. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, we be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. So now, here is a tribe, the Gibeonites, that they too have heard about what, what's going on and how God is making a way for Joshua and Israel. So instead of gathering to fight against them in battle, they decide that they're going to use some trickery. Right. Bible says that they wildly did work. They used trickery. What kind of trickery did they use? Well, the scripture told us uh, they dressed as if they were ambassadors come to negotiate with Israel and Joshua. Mm -hmm. And they uh, loaded up their donkeys with old wine bottles, broken bottles, and old, they put on old shoes and, and old garments and took bread that was dry and moldy, and they come to Joshua and say that they are from a far country and they want to make a treaty or a league with Joshua and Israel. They dressed that thing up pretty good, church. Now, let's see what happens. The men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? Now, I highlight that seventh verse in your Bible because there's just something about the Gibeonites coming that just didn't sit well with the men of Israel. Now, Here's something, and this is for free, church. Uh, if it don't seem right. If it just don't seem right. They begin by questioning. They say, now you told us you came from a long way, but what happens if, point in fact, y'all right here living among us? Verse 8, they said to Joshua, we are thy servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are ye? And from whence come ye? Remember, the children of Israel, they just got into the land. So they don't know all of the people, all of the inhabitant groups in the land. And so the Gibeonites have come as if they have come from a far country. But now something about them that, that Joshua and men of Israel questioned where they come from. Who are you? And verse 9, they said unto him, from a very far country, thy servants are come because of the name of the Lord thy God, for we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon, king of Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. And so now they begin to answer the questions, but notice this. They never did identify where they came from. They said from a far country. Well, the country got a name. <laughs> why, why, why don't they tell Joshua and Israel the name of the country? Well, then verse 11 says they go on. They says our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake to us saying, take victuals with you for the journey and go to meet them and say to them, we are your servants, therefore now make a league with us. They acknowledge that they heard about all of what God has done for Israel, but they have twisted the purpose for which they have come. And church, anytime you try to mix truth with anything but truth, Amen. then you know what you got, don't you? <laughs> so now, listen to this, verse 12. They said, this our bread we took hot 
for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you, but now behold, it is dry and moldy. Now, it was like that when it was loading it up to make the trip. But in order to try to make Joshua and Israel believe that they came from a far country, they tell them, but well, bread wasn't like this when we started our journey. The bread was, was, was hot out the oven. I mean, it was fresh bread. Y'all know how fresh bread is when you take it out the oven, don't you? Amen. So they give the impression that they have been on this long journey and have, have come. Now, look at verse 13. These bottles of wine which were filled were new. And behold, now they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. No, they dressed up like that when they were leaving the house. Right, right. The church can I pause and say this now. When the devil tried to trick you, he'll, he'll tell you just enough to get your confidence. Wow. The devil won't give you the, the whole story. Amen. And so now, like uh, to our young men, if, if you got a, a friend of yours and he shows up at the house one day and he's driving a, a, a brand new car and he said, come on, let's take a ride. You need to find out what his mom and daddy about that car. <laughs> Y'all walking with me today, church? See, before you, before you go jumping in the ride and, and, and waving to everybody as you go down the street, you need to pause because your partner, just like you, catch the school bus for school. <laughs> your partner, just like you, got to pay for lunch at the lunchroom. So now why does he get money to go and buy a car and then be able to come for you and take a ride? See, the devil won't tell you all the background. All the devil they jump in and let's go for a ride. Y'all ain't going in today, church. This is what's going on uh, here. Look, give me a nice say, just trust us. Trust us. Look, look at our clothes. Look at our shoes. Look at look at the wine bottle. Look, look at the bread. Verse 14. The men took of their victuals and as counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They were right to ask questions, mm -hmm. but their questions only went so far as what they could rationally figure out. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what happened. Verse 15, Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live and the princes of the congregation swear unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they dwelt among them. They said that they had come from a far country, they lived right around the corner. But now, the men of Israel, Joshua, they made a league, a treaty with the Gibeonites to not harm them. Although God has given them express direction that when he goes and takes them into Canaan land, God, God's getting ready to do some house cleaning, if you will. Can I say it like that? God getting ready to sweep through Canaan land. But now, Israel and Joshua have made a treaty with those of the Gibeonites. Mm -hmm. And they find out about it three days later. Mm -hmm. Once again, 
Now, this is not just for the young people. This is for all of us. The devil don't tell you up front. But after the fact, when things start happening, you begin to realize the deception of the enemy. Three days later, they find out they've been pleased. Of the land from before you. Therefore, 
for we were so afraid of our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now, behold, we are in thine hand as it seemeth good and right unto thee to do unto us do. Yeah. And so did he unto them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel that they slew them not and Joshua made them that day hewers of wood, drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord even unto this day in the place which he should choose. What was the consequence? The Gibeonites wound up having to then be responsible for cutting and carrying all of the wood that would be needed for the sacrifices to be offered at the tabernacle at the house of the Lord that was going to now be their responsibility. All, right. All of the water that would be used for the purification rites at the house of God, then they would have to draw the water out of the river and carry it as far as they had to carry it because this is now the consequence of their behavior. <coughs> but look at this, church. Can you see the grace of God at work? Amen. Where two wrongs don't make a right. <coughs> the Gibeonites were wrong in their deception. The children of Israel were wrong in being deceived and not talking to God. Amen. But in the midst of it, right. do you see how God works to give himself the glory? Yeah. God said because the children of Israel promised to let them He's going to let them live, but they're going to have to serve him. Amen. And the Lord, all right. <laughs> sure. So now, what is the lesson from the passage? Here's the lesson. And I said it earlier. If something just don't seem right, go pray and talk to God about it. Amen. You see that 14th verse says this. The children of Israel, the men of Israel, took of the things that the Gibeonites brought. They believed the story, though they questioned it from a rational and reasoned perspective. Their perspective was partial. They had a feeling something wasn't right about it, but they just ain't going to ask the Lord about it. Don't you think that if they had stopped and prayed and asked the Lord, that it's the same God that opened the Jordan River for them to walk over. It's the same God that when they marched around Jericho, the wall fell flat. It's the same God that pointed out that Egypt had taken what he was supposed to take. Don't you think that if they had just stopped and asked God about it, that they would have been in a better to your own understanding. Always stop and pray about it. Amen. Especially when something just doesn't seem right. Pray about it. Don't accept somebody else's word as the children of Israel accepted the word of the Gibeonites because it sounded okay. Maybe it had been on the 6 o'clock news. Maybe it had been printed in the local gazette. No matter where it came from, you go and talk to God about it. And God, who has perfect perspective, will lead you through the situation. Can you give God a hand clap of praise for this church? Like the words of it. Be not to your own understanding. How many times has somebody
somebody, don't, don't answer this out a little bit. Just how many times has somebody come to you and tried to peddle to you a get rich quick scheme? <laughs> how many times has somebody come to you and tried to sell you something out their trunk? <laughs> I think they just do that in the city where I live at. They don't, but uh, out the church, I'm going to explain to you what that means about somebody selling you something out of the trunk. <laughs> you got to know. There's no get rich quick. There's no just trust that they broke. <laughs> How many times have you bought pure gold jewelry <laughs> and it got wet? <laughs> All right, let me uh, extend the invitation to this site. I can sense that we don't want, we don't want to testify right now. <laughs> Truth be told. If you're here today, come to Jesus. What kind of name for baptism? I learned. Christian experience. We need you to come to Jesus today. Don't trust in your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct your path. Come to Jesus today. We need you to come. As we sing this song, come to Jesus today.